All right, what's going on guys? Welcome everybody back to another video on the channel. Hope you're having a good day. So in this video, we're going to be looking at 10 beginner tips that you can start using in zombies right now. They're going to help improve your gameplay. So whether you're just starting out and this is the first zombies game you've ever played, or if you're jumping back in after not playing for a few years, then these are going to help you transition into the game much smoother. And just more generally, if you've been playing the game for a bit, but you're looking for practical ways you can employ to get a little bit more skilled, then this video should help you out a lot. If you do enjoy the video today, or if you learn anything from it, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Subscribe if you are new to the channel, of course, for more zombies videos. If you do happen to fall into the 93% of people that aren't currently subbed to the channel, I don't know what you're doing with your life. We are barreling towards 400k, so if you would like to help us out in that endeavor, I would really appreciate it. But with that out of the way, guys, let's get into these 10 tips and tricks that you can use in zombies to help become better right now. So coming today at tip number 10 is going to be to maximize point building. And you can do this in a variety of ways. Now, you f first have to fundamentally understand how the point system in Cold War Zombies works. It's pretty different than what we've had in some of the oldest zombies titles where you would basically get 10 points per hit flat feed no matter what. But this one is a little bit uh, adjusted. And because points are such a vital key component to Cold War Zombies, some of the best things you can do in the early game are to go strictly for melee kills. This means you can apply a knife on your loadout if you really want to maximize points. If you're using a bullet gun, getting headshots is obviously going to grant you the most points instead of getting a body shot. Sometimes you'll get a double points drop, but it might be useful to save it until you flip the round and then begin getting the double points as the next round begins, so you can take advantage and just have more zombies to kill. You can also lay down in front of all the perk machines around the map, and you can do small little easter eggs that grant you points as well. You can go into the dark ether and shoot all the crystals while you're there for extra points, ammo, and even some rarer items, but maximizing your points in pretty much any spot in the game is super important if you want to get pack-a-punch early or even a lot of perks. Today at the number nine spot is going to be to work on your individual movement and your training skills. And so this is something because I've been playing zombies for literally so long, it's become virtually second nature to me. But I understand that not like this is not a universally known thing. And believe me, when I started zombies, this was something I didn't understand either. If I were to ask you what the most important tool is in determining your survival in zombies, you would probably say your gun, which is a reasonable answer. But in my opinion, it's actually your movement and your ability to maneuver around the map that's actually going to keep you life more than anything you can survive just like i am now completely without a gun you won't kill any zombies but you won't die either the best way to work on this is to understand where the spawn points really are you don't have to necessarily know all of them by heart but just generally understanding how many zombies are in the map at one time and getting kind of like eyes in the back of your head to determine where they are when they're behind you or just not within your vision and then deciding what would be the next route forward training is a lot about split second decisions and where you're going to move based on your enemies and ideally the more you practice this the less errors you're going to make, and that's typically how it goes. So I recommend jumping in and applying these tactics, and then just by repetition, you'll understand how the game actually works, and you'll be more comfortable and fluid with your movement, thus making you a lot harder to take down. Tip number seven is going to be understanding how each individual zombie works. And I know that sounds obvious, but I promise because of the nuances with how each individual one operates, it's important to know how they function. So for example, you have the regular zombies, the default ones, not too much to say there, you know how they work. You have the armored zombies which essentially behave as regular ones but with significantly more armor and there are bullet types and basically weapon classes that are better at chewing through that armor so that's important to keep in mind generally they're not a problem though then it gets a little more complicated with the dogs which these enemies can lunge at you but when you kill them they explode on impact however the gas they leave behind does not damage your armor so it's safe to run through it's only going to take away a little bit of hp you then have the megaton which is the big massive lad and then when you split him you will get a blaster and a megaton bomber and while these look the same a lot of people think that they behave identically as well which is untrue the blaster will shoot three like lasers at a time that can kind of track you and the bomber will leave behind an area of effect that if you're standing in it it will pretty much snuff you out in a few seconds so it's very anti-campy understanding the difference between the bomber and the blaster is actually way more important than you think because there are some cases where you'll be safe to stand and shoot from them on the bomber wars you would not be the blaster and vice versa Tip number seven is a more generalized tip that can be applied either in a solo or a co-op game, but this is going to be not picking up armor vests immediately, and I'll explain why. Now, let's say you're in a co-op game, you can immediately see how many of your teammates have armor, who doesn't, and what the status is. Now, an armor vest will, if you have armor, completely repair it, but if you don't have armor at all, it will give you one slot. However, applying another armor vest will not give you another slot. Of course, generally speaking, you want to give the armor vest to the teammate that doesn't have armor yet, or is maybe 
lacking on it, but if you're playing in a solo game, sometimes it's better to not pick up the armor vest if you feel like you're going to take a lot more hits, and you can stay around that area and pick it up when you really need it instead of just grabbing it immediately, because they do last pretty long. Instead of jumping the gun and just picking up the armor vest immediately when you see it, it's sometimes worth just laying back and then seeing what happens for the next couple of seconds before you go and obtain that armor vest. Tip number six is going to be selecting the correct field upgrade for the job at hand. Now, I see a lot of newer players just jumping into the game without a sliver of thought of what specialist upgrade they're bringing in. If you're going to be playing a camping strategy, the one you're seeing on screen, I am going to recommend Ring of Fire. This can be selected in your menu and once fully upgraded, pretty much is the best overall utility as far as being able to camp. It increases your damage output, it blocks projectiles, it's amazing. However, if you're learning to train and you're trying to sort of take your movement to another level and you don't want to completely risk it, then you can run Ether Shroud, which is essentially a zombie blood from older zombies games or more or less a, a get out of jail free card. As training is generally a lot more risky, you can use Ether Shroud to get out of situations where you positioned incorrectly and more importantly, you can learn from how you positioned wrong and how you can fix it later. Whatever your preference is, however, remember to select it in the menu for your create a class before you begin the match. Tip number five, beginning your first few games, I would strongly recommend committing to one gun. Now, it can be any weapon you like, ideally one of the better ones in the game, and if you're curious on which ones tend to be the best, I made a top 10 best guns video that you can go and check out after this, but pretty much any weapon you like, I would recommend committing to it to get it fully upgraded to tier 3 pack punch, as well as fully upgrading its rarity that you can do through scrap and salvage. The main benefit to putting all your points and scrap and resources into one weapon is that you'll have a gun that's incredibly reliable and that scales with the round, so that is pretty much viable on whatever round, even if it gets a little bit too high for your comfort zone, it should be something that can at least get the job done. If you spread your resources too thin and try to upgrade too many different weapons, you may end up with a bunch of different mediocre guns, but nothing really that powerful or effective, so I'm going to strongly recommend you can pick your loadout weapon and fully commit to that, or it, it really anything out of the box as well. Tip number four is going to be to obtain the suppressor from your loadout weapon or get it by re-rolling attachments at the arsenal to get the suppressor. This is one of the most important attachments in zombies, and you might ask yourself why, because it's not entirely obvious why you'd even want or care about a suppressor in zombies, but what this actually has an effect on is the amount of salvage and scrap that you're going to be able to obtain from zombies, and of course this is like basically the most important resource in terms of getting self-revives or chopper gunners or even just simply upgrading your weapons. I am going to go into detail in a future video about how the specifics of each attachment works, but definitely the suppressor is one of the most important ones for just obtaining more resources and is something I pretty much never play without. Coming in at number three is going to be just having a basic understanding of how different weapon classes affect your movement, and this is important because your movement speed in zombies is of course very crucial as we went over earlier, and certain weapon types and weights of them will affect how your character moves around the map, and especially when firing and how much slowdown you get it gets really technical and i'm going to save that for a more advanced video but just generally understanding that like pistols smgs and shotguns pretty much have the exact same movement speed whereas you're going to get a little bit more of a penalty with something like an ar or even more an lmg some of the attack rifles actually give you the most amount of slowdown which is annoying depending on the strategy you're running it might be beneficial to have a heavier gun that puts out a lot more damage if you you know happen to be camping or playing a more methodical strategy if you're running around and need to be moving quickly consider like an smg a shotgun or a pistol you actually don't move any faster when you're only holding a knife, which is weird in this game. That might change in the future, I'm not sure. But just having a decent understanding of how the weapon class affects your movement, you can just jump in, try out a bunch of different varieties of them, and, and see how they affect you. But at the end of the day, it's just about having the right tool for the job. Tip number two is going to be understanding all of the different ammo types. So you basically, after pack a punching have the option for elemental pop, which can activate a random one, but you can even apply manual ones to your guns. You have Blast Furnace, Deadwire, Turned, and Cryo Freeze. A lot of these do behave a little bit differently than you may have remembered if you played something like Black Ops 3 or even 4, but generally I think the best ones in the game right now are probably going to be Turned or Blast Furnace, because Deadwire freezes zombies in place that I don't really like, and it's just not, it's not as ideal as it used to be. Blast Furnace will deal damage to the zombies over time, and Cryo Freeze will freeze zombies and slow them down, deals damage over time, but I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of that one either. I think Turned and Blast Furnace are the most reliable and practical, but I recommend doing some experimenting with different strategies and unique techniques that you have. There's also different cooldown times for each activation, depending on what ammo type you're running, but again, that's a little more advanced that we'll talk about in another video, but just having a fundamental understanding of what all the ammo mods do, and remembering to get them at the Pack-a-Punch machine if you do 
do happen to be running one. Now, finally, guys, coming today at the number one spot is going to be increasing your overall game awareness. And oddly enough, one of the best things you can do is utilize your minimap, which was one of the weirdest features that they added in Cold War Zombies. But it's incredibly useful to know where the zombies are in relation to you at pretty much any point in the match. Not only does it track zombies, but it can let you know where ammo stations are or doors if you're not super familiar with the map. You can even understand where the fast travel locations are. And even things as simple as, you know, how much ammo is left in your other gun that you're not currently using how much ammo you might have left in like your war machine or your score streak or whatever it may be how many grenades you have and why you're using the ones you are looking out for the revive icon when teammates happen to go down because it doesn't come up super obviously in the middle of the screen like it used to an older zombie game so without letting teammates die you can be on top of that revive immediately but just increasing your game awareness is going to help you in every aspect regardless and definitely all of the previous tips talked about are going to help increase that game awareness naturally but you can even just consciously work on improving that if you do happen to be just kind of struggling with where you are in the game and seem to be a little bit lost or confused but I hope these were able to help regardless and these were the top 10 new tips that I can give to people that are just beginning in zombies or want to get a little bit better I am again going to have a very advanced guide for players that are actually familiar with the game already and want to get really really good and take their skills to the next level I will have a much more technical guide coming out soon so remember to subscribe and stick around if you haven't done already if you enjoyed the video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and I also do stream zombies almost every day over on Twitch if you don't already follow me and want to come say hi, link to that is in the description. But hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next stream or the next video. Have a good one, and peace out.